Hey there, MJ traders and investors. It's Rod with Pow Group. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth, your home for MJ stocks, crypto assets, news, and interviews. Also, I'm the best MJ community. It's Saturday, January 6th. Hope you're having a great weekend. And in this video, we're going to dive into another rapid fire news update for the period December 30th to January 5th. Again, as always, this isn't to go into deep dive details. It's just to give a high level overview of all the pertinent information that happened over the last week or so. And if you want to look into it more on your own time, then feel free to do so. But before we get to it, make sure to smash the like. It helps support me in the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. If you're new, you can subscribe, take the bell, all that good stuff, and you'll be notified on any future videos or when I go live. Also, make sure to give us a follow over on X, which is formerly Twitter. The handle for that is at GroupPow. Going to be using that as my platform of choice going forward. As always, nothing in this video is financial advice. This is for entertainment and informational purposes only. You should never ever buy anything based on anything that I say or anything that I write. And also, try to keep these videos around 10 to 15 minutes. And let me know in the comments below what you think of this news, uh, what really stood out to you, and uh, do you like this new format? So this was an article from Benzinga. Tesla investor Ross Gerber calls on the DEA to reschedule cannabis. Absurd that we're still waiting. Uh, amen to that. I think we can all agree that it's absolutely absurd and... It just makes absolutely no sense that we are on the same list as heroin. It's time for, for change, and we're finally seeing this time is different. And we've said that before in the past, but like I said, we've got major corporations and you know Apple, Amazon backing it. We've got tons of movement in and chatter in Congress, and that is something that has been lacking for the last few years, right? It kind of took a back burner to other pressing issues around the globe, but as we see with the recent articles, it just seems like there's just more and more talk and more and more movement on this. Even though we haven't seen any real progress yet, the fact that it just keeps coming up is just an inevitability at this point, right, before we get some sort of reform, especially in the U.S. Also, New York retailers sold 3.5 million marijuana products in the first year of legalization, state report says. And that's going to be an absolute monster of a market. Also, DEA calls for even more THC, psilocybin, and DMT to be produced for research in 2024. So this kind of gives you a little bit of insight on you know what they're thinking. And they mentioned THC, obviously uh, marijuana, they're focusing on marijuana and there's some more information with regards to the DEA here in just a couple of minutes. Also the South Dakota officials clear MJ legalization campaign to launch paid signature drive for 2024 ballot initiative. And we're, again, more and more states, more and more countries, right? Germany could potentially come online anytime really in the next few months. And this is just a trend that's going to continue. And eventually, you know, they won't be able to sweep it under the rug any longer, right? And then Florida potentially on the ballot for 2024 recreational use. Oh man, Pennsylvania, Ohio, uh, things are really starting to heat up here in a big way. Also, I did a video on this, but High Tide welcomes doubling of Ontario retail MJ store cap. So it's going to go from 75 to 150. A lot of people say that the Canadian market isn't worth it. It's going to be a multi-billion dollar market. And right now, High Tide has a $500 million run rate. Imagine what's going to happen when they double their store count and then expand to the rest of Canada. They're, they're only in a few provinces. Wait until they get to the Atlantic provinces and double their store count in Ontario, Canada's biggest province. So uh, as he said, Raj Grover, the CEO, there's so much work for them to do here at home in Canada. And then just imagine once they start to expand to other markets like the US and abroad, right? So much opportunity there, it's not even funny. Also did a video I added high tide last week. If you haven't seen that, I added three MJ stocks last week. You can check that video out for more information. Also, fourth MJ store opens in indigenous community in Alberta. And Alberta just continues to pump out the stores, uh, but this is great to see. Also, New York local governments could shut down unlicensed MJ businesses under new Smoke Out Act bill. And it's still amazing to me that we have all these unlicensed MJ businesses operating and tons of people saying that, you know, when you walk into some of these unlicensed businesses, you wouldn't even know, right? They're selling actual legit products. And, you know, to the uneducated consumer, you wouldn't even know that it wasn't an unlicensed business, right? Uh, so, yeah, I don't know how this is even still going, but uh, I, there's going to be something big coming down the pipeline. I think they're not going to allow this to go on forever. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this, or if you've ever been in one of these unlicensed uh, MJ stores. Also, True Leaf MJ closes 25 million loan and hires a new CFO. Uh, their previous CEO, or CFO rather, I did a video on that. They wrongly expensed over like $350,000 worth of expenses. Um, I don't have the best taste in my mouth when it comes to True Leaf, to be completely honest with you. We know that they're, that, uh, the CEO, Kim Rivers' husband, had potential ties to the mob and a RICO case and an employee died on you know, whenever they were on shift. And then the mother, I think it was the mother or the parents, sued truly for wrongful cause of death. 
and you know family Herc was out to the to the family that was affected by that but just not a good look for true leave to be honest and um yeah i i, I don't really know what to think here in terms of this company but uh, i'm staying away for now uh, i've got exposure to it in my msos position the etf but uh, i don't know i just have a bad gut feeling and usually whenever i have a gut feeling about something uh, 90 if not 90 to 99 percent of the time it's usually correct and uh i got a bad feeling so uh, just be careful out there also alabama vows 2024 medical mj launch despite latest legal obstacle game theory continues to play out also cannabis still the world's most used substance says un report according to the united nations there are, are an estimated 219 million cannabis users worldwide with that number trending upward you can't stop it this the cat's out of the hat at this point you're not going to be able to to stop this amazing plant and industry and medicine of the future right people have spoken the research continues and we're only going to see more and more breakthroughs and just more applications and use cases of how amazing this plant is and how it can really better the lives of people congressman's mj memo predicts productive 2024 and push biden to embrace reform ahead of the election so again we're starting to see more and more campaigns in the, the presidential election uh, campaigns they're going to be using mj as a way to sway voters especially younger voters and the reason why dems took control of the senate in 2021 was more than likely because of mj right and the whole reason why biden even got elected was probably because of mj so i think the uh, focus is definitely going to be turning to that ahead of the uh, the 2024 elections in november also missouri police couldn't use mj odor as a basis of vehicle or property searches under a new bill so that's interesting and it's going to be interesting to see how they really regulate uh, and you know, uh, you know, kind of police all of the consumption while driving, right? Because as we know, you know, some people, you know, who are taking it medicinally, you know, maybe they aren't normal when they're not consuming it, right? Like it's got, there's going to be a real weird fine line gray area of who can and who can't operate a vehicle. And if you've ever, uh, you know, tried to, you know, if you drive a vehicle stoned, obviously you're impaired, but, you know, if you're somebody who, you know, who needs this as medicine, how do you, how do you stop them or prevent them, right? So some people are saying that, you know, there there's going to be some laws or something like that, that if you have it medicinally, if you have a medical card and you take it for medical purposes and prove that, you can still drive and operate a vehicle. But obviously, if somebody's consuming MJ for the first time, they shouldn't drive a vehicle, right? But I mean, if you've been consuming MJ for 10, 15 plus years, you know, if you smoke a joint or something like that, and then, you know, a few hours later you drive, you're some people may be okay, right? So I don't know how they're going to do this. It's going to be a very, very fine line and it's in gray area. It's, it's not something that you can police as easy as, you know, your, your blood to alcohol levels and things like that with regards to alcohol and driving. Um, but yeah, curious on your thoughts and opinions on this in the comment section below. I guess with more research and more uh, innovation and technology breakthroughs, uh, we may find a better way to uh, to administer and, and police it. But uh, that's that's a wild card for me. I don't, I don't know how they're going to, how they're going to get around that or, you know, how they're going to police that. Also, Oxley announces non-binding term sheet to extend Oxley Leamington Credit Facility for up to three years and third interim extension. And this is going to be one of those companies that really interested to see how they're, you know, how this is the story is going to play out. Uh, this could be a massive risk for reward opportunity and uh, stock price pretty much at zero rates been hovering around a penny or two pennies. Uh, so I, I'm interested to see if this company can pull it around. I think they they have a good chance at it. They're potentially a bio target from somebody. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, they got a lot of work to do and uh, a lot of challenge ahead of them. Uh, but let's see if they can uh, make this one of the more you know successful success stories in the uh, in the MJ space. Also, Ohio GOP governor pushes lawmakers to allow MJ sales very quickly and ban intoxicating hemp products. Also, Village Farms sends first MJ shipment to growing UK market. So that is great to see. This isn't a name that I that I own uh, indirectly. I own it or directly I own it indirectly through an ETF, but I may look at taking a position in Village Farms as well. But uh, to, personally, I, I don't think that they're going to be around long-term. I think they'll probably get bought out or uh, maybe, you know, sell their, their business or something like that. As we know, they're, you know, they're into... Uh, uh, fruits and vegetables and other agricultural uh, products as well but I, I don't know I, I just I think that there's a lot of competition out there and I don't think there's anything that really stands village firms apart from the rest uh, they're not really their business model isn't really anything you know different you know you get your like SNDLs who's into retail and 
alcohol and MJ, and then you got your you know High Tide, which is a non franchise who only does retail, and then you got your you know your Tilrays and your Organograms, and they're all like vastly different. Whereas you know Organograms basically 100% focused on MJ, which I like too. But Village Farms, you know, I don't I don't really see a competitive moat there, uh, competitive advantage. I don't really see much of a moat there. But I could be wrong. Uh, but like I said, it might be one of those names that you know it's worth the risk as well. Uh, taking a bit of a YOLO play at it, but let me know in the comments below if you're bullish on Village Farms, you think they're going to be one of the long-term successful companies in the space and, and your reasoning behind that. Also, DEA tells Congress it has final authority on MJ regardless of health agency schedule three recommendation. Uh, this is basically stating the obvious, Captain Obvious. I, I don't know how <laughs> that's, uh, I mean, shouldn't Congress have final authority on pretty much everything when it comes to, you know, any kind of, you know, any kind of laws or regulation. I mean, obviously, if you know, legis if lawmakers draft a bill or legislation that allows a certain thing or disallows a certain thing, then that should be, you know, that should have precedence, right? So I, I don't really know what the point of this article was. Um, it kind of just tells me that Congress is, you know, black. They can't get anything done uh, because of you know both sides of the aisle trying to get you know trying to to come away with the win, regardless of you know they're not really just trying to you know better the industry or help the industry. They're just at a crossroad, right? And it's a political theater and, and you know, both sides don't want to get something done because one wants to take the credit for it. And then the DA, I think this is basically just telling them like, hey, you know, you're Congress, right? Why are you, why are you waiting on us, DEA, when we were put here by Congress, right? So uh, I think this is just the DEA kind of giving them uh, a reminder that, you know, you're the one who's supposed to be getting these laws done, right? Um, but yeah, we'll see if DEA comes back with a response. I think most likely scenarios we do get uh, some sort of response from the DEA over the next one to two months, uh, one to two quarters. Uh, and I think that they're going to approve it. And we got some more information coming on that in just a moment. Also, New Mexico sets new monthly MJ sales record with purchases topping half a billion dollars in the first full year of recreational market. And this is only the tip of the iceberg. Just imagine once we get Latin America, you got, you know, Germany, the rest of Europe and all over the UK, you got, you know, Asia. Oh man, the, the potential here is absolutely staggering. 70% of medical MJ products in Mississippi on hold for retesting. So a large batch of medical MJ products in Mississippi have been placed on administrative hold as regulators continue testing to clear the products for sale. So a little bit of a hiccup there and uh, some kinks to iron out, but to be expected with a growing industry. Also, MJ uh, company Tilray Brands kicks off the new year with a boost from Riff MJ. And these are a couple new drinks. So they have the new Vanilla Frost and Tropical Burst. And uh, they're 355 mil cans. And they've got uh, THC 10 milligrams and 10 milligrams of CBG. And also ginseng extract, extract and 30 milligrams of naturally occurring caffeine from guarana extract. So these are great. They're basically uh, an energy drink. Can't wait to try these out. I haven't. If you have, let me know in the comments below what you think of this. Or if you're viewing it in the future, let me know your thoughts and opinions, what you would rate it at of 1 to 10, 10 being the best. Uh, but I'll be doing some reviews on this as soon as I see them in my local stores. And uh, we do have earnings coming up on January 9th, so Tuesday next week, I'll be covering the earnings extensively. I'll do a review and my thoughts and opinions, and uh, I'll cover the numbers, and then I'll also be joining the conference call, so I'll be updating everybody. So make sure to subscribe and tick the bell, and you'll be notified on those updates. Also, new Kentucky bill would legalize MJ use and possession, but home cult and home cultivation, but not sales. So uh, again, we're starting to see more and more states, the states that you'd never think too, right? And you know, just a matter of time before we see like a Texas or something like that, right? Which obviously stigma there is a lot worse, but it, it, it's slowly but surely starting to, like I said, they can't sweep it under the rug for much longer. Also, Florida inches closer to recreational MJ with 2024 ballot initiative. And I did a video specifically on this, so you can check that out. But essentially, we should see a ruling by April 1st is, uh, is what they are expecting from the Florida Supreme Court. So things are heating up in a big way uh, right before 420. And again, we could see some rescheduling updates and that's a nice segue into my next article here. DEA confirms it is reviewing MJ rescheduling recommendation. So this is basically not new information, but a little bit reassuring that we know that the DEA is reviewing it. So, uh, you know, kind of confirming what we already know, but this is official confirmation of what we believe to already know, right? So this is great in my opinion. And like I said, this could potentially come out around uh, 420 as well. And what a what a marketing campaign that would be for, you know, the, these politicians ahead of the U.S. elections where, you know, we get some sort of movement on that and then they make it, you know, 
all over the headlines, right? At 420, it's going to be dominating all the, the front lines and the, the main pages on all these uh, media companies. And then we're going to see, you know, potential for it being enacted into late 2024, if not 2025. I think 2025 is probably where it's going to officially get rescheduled because there's going to be a 60-day comment period and things like that from the public. So it's not going to be enacted right away just as soon as DEA comes out with a, you know, with a recommendation there. They've approved that recommendation from HHS. So what I think would more than likely happen is we could get the approval from DEA and then a 60-day comment period and then it'll probably uh, get enacted some point, you know, just after the elections, I would think. And then they would use that as a way to say that look what we did leading into these elections right and look what we're going to continue to do so uh, that's what i'm believing will happen and uh could be wrong but let me know your thoughts and opinions on that in the comment section below also study finds most cancer survivors who used mj reported a great degree of symptomatic improvement and also a great alternative to opioids right which we know are highly highly addictive so again how can you deny people of this medicine of the future that's really changing their lives, especially at a terminal point in, in their lives, right, where they're they're suffering and they're at, and at the end of their life. Like, how dare we, uh, you know, deny people of that? It's a plant. Uh, it's natural, right? So uh, medicine of the future, it's time for change. Wisconsin governor says he'll settle for medical MJ legalization. Absolutely. Uh, it's not what we want. We want full-blown legalization, obviously, but, you know, medical, uh, those are probably the people who need it the most, right? So again, give the people what they want and uh, let everybody have access to this amazing plant and medicine of the future. Florida GOP lawmaker files bill to cap MJ at 10% THC if voters approve legalization ballot measure. Dot, dot, dot. Like, what? Isn't this insane? <laughs> Why would we ever cap it at 10%? Like, this will not happen in my opinion. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. Do you think this is absolutely insane? Uh, personally, I do. I don't think this has a chance in hell of making any you know progress. There's no way they would cap it at 10%. I, I just can't ever imagine that in a world where that would happen. Uh, that is so unbelievably low. And here in Canada, you know, most people, if it's not 30% or higher, they don't even really blink an eye at it, right? So 10% uh, is almost just laughable, but uh, kind of entertaining at the least, to say the least. But Body and Mind also announces closing of Markham, Illinois dispensary transaction. So this is another small cap name that I think has huge uh, risk versus reward uh, with, you know, favoring definitely the skills favoring uh, reward there uh, for, uh, you know, there's definitely some risk, but I think the reward definitely outweighs the risk and it's a profitable small uh, producer in the US and could be a nice bio target as well. Also, MJ in Europe, seven reasons to be optimistic in 2024. Europe is already firmly on the path towards reform. Just quick synopsis here, Germany uh, may pave the way for wider EU reform and as well as wider acceptance of medical MJ and the US will move towards federal reform which could have global impact and five new tech and AI will improve patient care. Absolutely, I'm excited for 2024 and beyond. Also, Colorado governor's office slams DeSantis MJ stance pushing back against claim that legalization led to bigger illicit market. I don't know what this guy's smoking. Maybe he's smoking uh, something else other than MJ. <laughs> Maybe he's smoking the, the bad stuff, uh, the opioids or something. I don't know. Uh, this guy is out to lunch, in my opinion, if he thinks that. But uh, yeah, maybe we should get him smoking this stuff, medicine of the future. And uh, maybe he'll come back to earth. I, I don't know what he's on. Uh, I, I'd say he's on something a little bit harder than uh, than MJ. Because uh, that guy seems to be completely off his rocker. Also, Humble and Fume Inc. files for CCAA protection. So again, more CCA, CCAA uh, creditor protection uh, filings, uh, bankruptcy filings. This is just a trend that is going to continue. And really going to push the Canadian government and governments around the world to do something about it. Right? These high excise taxes... Uh, all these things hindering the industry need to change and even the federal government in Canada has said that it's time for them to get on board and support the industry and the more companies that file for creditor protection or bankruptcy you know filings proceedings it's just going to encourage them to to make some sort of change right they'll they'll have to at some point so all right going to end it there let me know what you think of all of this news that I didn't think there was going to be that much news this week but wow almost at 20 minutes uh, but uh, I could this this video I've only touched on tip of the iceberg on some of these articles right that happened over the last week i cherry picked them the most pertinent information if i was to go over everything i'd literally be on here for like two or three hours and then give my comments as well uh it'd be almost never ending so let me know what you think about this news what was your most uh, favorite news piece out of this video let me know what you think of this new format but going into there it's rod with power group thanks again for joining us on the pursuit of wealth hope you have a fantastic rest of your weekend and we'll see you again on the next video